frequently by unlit, made an impression when it, when it appeared on Morning Joe. The TCEQ investigation report from my complaint said the emissions I saw were the flares lighter. The first time I spoke to the EPA was in North Carolina, shortly after fracking surrounded my farm, turning my air brown and my water black. I showed you optical gas imaging videos recorded by the TCEQ and told you stories from people whose property, water, and health were damaged. Since 2010, I've been telling you stories of real people and showing you evidence of harm caused by oil and gas. Now I'm going to tell you a story about my family. My son received a president's scholarship to attend the University of Southern California. We still struggled to pay his expenses and avoid a lifetime of debt. He graduated in May. He is the first person in my family to earn a college degree, so it was a happy day. As he looked into his future, he started battling depression. He reads investigations in scientific journals. He knows what his future holds. His biggest worry is for the least among us, the poor, the homeless, and people in undeveloped com countries. They will suffer the most. He fell deeper into depression, stopped sleeping and eating, and tried the wrong solution. I was in the Permian Basin with the, with the MSNBC when I got the call that my child was in a psych ward. Time Magazine calls it deaths of despair. 36,000 millennials died deaths of despair in 2017. 38% of millennials cite climate change as a factor when considering whether to have children. 70% of Americans are worried about climate change and 51% <coughs> feel helpless about it. Methane from oil and gas is a low hanging fruit in easing climate change despair. Science tells us our planet will respond immediately to a drop in methane and the rapid warming will slow. This is my son. His name is Adam. When you go home, see his face. See my tears and find the courage to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you very much.